Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we'll go through everything you need to know for your upcoming test on probability. So I've done two different videos for this test. It covers geometry, so congruent triangles and all that, and also probability. So I suggest you check out the geometry video. This is the probability video. So let's get started. So, of course, probability is all about giving random events a number to indicate how likely they are to occur. So, the number we give the event has to be between 0 and 1. It doesn't matter whether you write as a fraction, decimal, or percentage, but whenever you're asked what is the probability of something, your answer needs to be a number between 0 and 1. Don't write likely or unlikely. Don't write, you know, the number 50 or whatever. No, it has to be a number between 0 and 1. So obviously, if an event has probability 0, that means it's impossible. There's absolutely no way that it can occur. If the probability is 1, it is certain that it will occur. There's no way it will not occur. Of course, halfway between that, 0 0.5 or a half. If a prob an event has probability of a half, it is even chance. That means it is just as likely to happen as it is to not happen. Of course, events with probability close to zero becoming more and more unlikely. So if the probability of an event is close to zero, it's more likely that the event will not happen. And if the probability of an event is more than a half, as we get closer to one, it's more and more likely. So events with a probability of close to one are more likely to happen than not to happen. So once again, if you're asked what is the probability of something, you need to give a number between zero and one. And that number indicates how likely the event is to occur. But how do we actually calculate the probability of an event? So the formula we use to calculate the probability of an event is now on your screen. So the probability of an event is the number of ways the event can occur divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So there's a few things we need to know here. Firstly, we use this notation. P with brackets means calculate the probability of whatever's in the brackets. So NS means number of outcomes in the sample space. So remember, the sample space is something you would have learned in year seven. It's just a list of all the possible outcomes. So let's look at an example. So let's say, for example, I roll a die. So I'm talking about a normal six-sided die that you're used to. Okay, so the sample space, I'll just call that S, is a list of all the possible outcomes. So when I roll a die, I can get outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So NS means the number of outcomes in the sample space. So there are 6 outcomes in the sample space. So we're going to use this formula here to calculate the probability of some of the events. So first off, let's say I write P1. That means the probability that I get a 1. Well, there's one way I can get it. There's only one 1 on the die, and there are 6 outcomes in total. So it's just 1 over 6. Note that 1 out of 6, 1 over 6, is a number between 0 and 1. One. I didn't write a word to answer the question, and I didn't say unlikely or anything like that. I didn't just write, you know, the number 6. It is a number between 0 and 1. So let's say I want to find the probability that I get a number greater than 3. So how many ways can this occur? Well, I could get a 4, a 5, or a 6. So there's three ways I can get a number greater than 3 out of 6. So again, 3 out of 6 is a number between 0 and 1. You can write it as a half or 0 0.5 or 50%. Which way you write it doesn't matter because they're all the same thing. So let's say I wanted to find the probability that I roll a multiple of 3. So we do the same thing. 
we say, how many ways can it occur? Well, I could get a three or a six. They're multiples of three. So there's two ways it can occur out of six outcomes in total, which is one over three or 0 0.3 recurring. Again, how you write it doesn't matter since one over three, 0 0.3 recurring is a terminating decimal. It's probably much easier to write it as a fraction. So we just calculated the probability that I roll an, a multiple of three. Now let's look at the probability I roll a number that's even and a multiple of three. So end means it has to be both. It has to be even and it also has to be a multiple of three. So now there's only one way that it can occur. That's six. Six is the only number in the sample space that is both even and a multiple of three. One way it can occur out of six outcomes in total. So now I'm going to look at the probability that I roll a number that's even or a multiple of three. So we have to make sure we know the difference between and and or. So when I say the probability it's even or a multiple of three, what I need to do is include all the even numbers and all the multiples of three. So I've actually kind of circled six twice, okay? So even or multiple of three means find out that it's either even, a multiple of three, or both. So as you can see, I've circled four numbers there. So there are four ways it can occur out of six outcomes in total. So again, you can write that as two over three, which is a simplified fraction, 0 0.6 recurring or whatever. All right, we're just gonna quickly go through the difference between experimental and theoretical probability now. Please pause and copy this down if you need. Or so the theoretical probability is the proportional fraction of times that I expect an event to occur, whereas the experimental probability is the proportional fraction of times that an event actually occurs. So let's say I roll a die again. So in the previous example, I calculated the probability that I roll a 1 is 1 over 6. I also calculated the probability that I roll a number that's even or a multiple of 3 or both was 2 thirds. So in each of these cases, I've actually calculated the theoretical probability. So whenever you use that formula on the previous slide, you're calculating the theoretical probability. So what does it actually mean? Well, let's look at this. So the probability of rolling a 1 is 1 over 6. That means if I roll a die heaps of times, I expect that I will roll a 1 1 sixth of the time. If the probability of an even number or multiple of 3 is 2 thirds, that means that 2 thirds of the time when I roll a die, I expect that I will roll an even number or multiple of three or both. So let's say, for example, that I roll a die 300 times. So I expect that I will get a one, one sixth of the time. So one sixth of 300 is the same as one sixth times 300, which is 50. So I expect that I will roll a 1 50 times. So similarly, 2 thirds of 300 is 200. So I expect, if I roll a die 300 times, that on 200 of those rolls, I will roll an even number or a multiple of 3. And remember, even or multiple of 3 means even multiple of three or both, okay? But of course, if I roll a die 300 times, this may not happen. I might not get exactly 50 ones. I might roll it one only 30 times, or I could roll it 200 times. So that's what I've said about theoretical probability. Experimental probability is what actually happens. So let's say I roll a die 300 times, and let's say I roll a 1 on 60 of those rolls. So the theoretical probability of rolling a 1 is 1 sixth, 
but the experimental probability of rolling a one is the number of times it happened over the total number of outcomes. So it's actually one over five in this case. The experimental probability and theoretical probability are not necessarily equal. And this is just common sense. You know that if I toss a coin, the probability of getting heads is a half. That's the theoretical probability. I should get a head half of the number of times I toss a coin. But of course, if you toss a coin heaps of times, you might not get the same number of heads and tails. So what you actually get is experimental probability. And what you should get, what you expect to happen, that's theoretical probability. So anytime you use the formula on the previous slide, number of ways it can occur over total number of outcomes, that's theoretical. You're calculating what should happen. Whereas experimental is when you're using the actual number of times something happened. All right, let's move on. Now we go to Venn diagrams and two-way tables. So let's look at so let's look at this example here. Class of 28 students, eight have blue eyes, five blonde hair, and 18 have neither. So what we have are information about categories. So I'll call the students with blue eyes, they can be category A, and students with blonde hair, category B. So Venn diagrams and two-way tables do the same thing. They both display information about two categories. They tell you how many are in one category or both categories or neither. The whole point of them is to display the information so we can answer probability questions easily. So after I go through them, we'll be able to answer questions like, what's the probability someone has blue eyes or blonde hair and blue eyes or whatever. So let's first look at a Venn diagram, just letting you know you need to know how to do both of these. So Venn diagram, you have a rectangle and two circles inside the rectangle. The two circles represent the two categories the question's talking about. In this case, A, that was blue eyes, and B, blonde hair. So the Venn diagram has four numbers. This number here, the number who are in category A only, meaning they have blue eyes only, the number that goes in the middle is the number that have both. Then we have the number that are in the second category only and a number outside the circle, which are the people who are in neither category. So, of course, this represents people that have blue eyes, but they don't have blonde hair. So I'm going to put a little dash at the end of blonde hair. That means not so, of course, I'm talking about people who don't have blonde hair. So the number in the middle, as I said, so that's both. We're talking people who have blue eyes and blonde hair. The number that goes outside is neither. And then, of course, this number here would represent people who have blonde hair but do not have blue eyes. So, again, I'm going to put a dash to represent not. Okay, so we've got to fill these four boxes. Venn diagrams need four numbers. So hopefully you're a little confused. The fact that 8 plus 5 plus 18 doesn't equal 28. It equals 31. So what that means is I have overcounted 3. There are 3 too many here because they added up to 31 and there are only 28 students. So however many you have overcounted, that's how many are in both. The only way this is possible is if 3 students were counted here in the blue eyes group and then again in the blonde hair group. However many you've overcounted is however many are in both. So there are 3 students in both. So now I've got to fill in the other numbers. So you might think that I put 8 here for blue eyes, but that's wrong. Why is that wrong? So this circle, the blue-eyed circle, needs 8 students inside it. There are already 3 inside it. So that means I only need 5 to go here. Similarly, the blonde hair circle needs 5 students. It already has 3, so I need 2 more. And then the 18 that have neither go on the outside. 
So note, 18 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 does equal 28. So I know I've done something right. So let's now look at putting this information in a two-way table. So for a two-way table, you draw up a 4x4 four four table like this. So the two ways represent the categories. So the first way, a student can have blue eyes or not blue eyes. So again, I'm going to put a dash to represent they don't have blue eyes. And then the second way, they can have blonde hair or they can not have blonde hair. Once again, I'll put a dash to represent not. Okay, so they should have a row for total in two-way tables. So that's something that's slightly different than a Venn diagram. But these do represent the same information. So these four cells here, the numbers we're interested in, they are the same four numbers you will find in the Venn diagram. So these four numbers I've circled will go in one of these four cells here. So this, let's look at this first one here. So this is in the blue eyes column, but it's also in the blonde hair row. So these are people that have both blue eyes and blonde hair, and we already figured out that's three. Let's go to the next one along. So this one here. So it's in the not blue eyes column, but the blonde hair row. So these are the people who have blonde hair, but not blue eyes. And we figured out that that's these people here. So there a two goes there. So similarly down in the Next cell is the other people who have blue eyes but not blonde hair, and then the people who have neither go in the fourth cell. So 3, 2, 5, and 18, they were the same four numbers we saw in the Venn diagram. So let's look at the total. So 3 plus 5 is 8, 2 plus 18 is 20, 3 plus 2 and 5 plus 18. So this number and this number together should add to the same as those two. And they do, so I know I've done something right. So I've displayed the information in both a two-way table and a Venn diagram. They do the exact same thing. Now we're going to use this information to answer some probability questions. So first off, what would be the probability if I pick a student at random that they have blue eyes? Well, that's actually pretty easy. In the Venn diagram, we see there are eight people with blue eyes. We see eight people with blue eyes in the two-way table too. There are 28 in total. So I'm just going to simplify that fraction, 2 over 7. So what's the probability that a student has blonde hair and blue eyes? So the probability a student has blonde hair and blue eyes, we look at the middle of the Venn diagram, or we look at this cell of the two-way table. There are three students out of 28 in total. So what's the probability a student has blonde hair or blue eyes? Well, I can write this as A or B, because I said A was blue eyes and B was blonde hair. So remember, A or B means all those in A, all those in B, all those in both. We're talking about students who have blonde hair, blue eyes, or both. So in the Venn diagram, we're talking about these people with blue eyes and the people with blonde hair too. We're talking about the three numbers inside the Venn diagram. In the two-way table, we're talking about these three numbers, people with blue eyes, blonde hair, or both. If you add those up, you get 10 out of 28, and again, we can simplify that. Okay, so the probability a student has blonde hair or blue eyes is 5 over 14. So if we just say or, we include both. So if I said what's the probability of A or B but not both, this time I'm interested in people who have blue eyes or blonde hair, but not both, because I specifically said, but not both. So that would just be these five and these two. These five and these two. So it would be seven out of 28, which is the same as one over four. So please pause and copy down these examples if you need. 
So let's now try this question. I pick a student who I know has blonde hair. What is the probability they also have blue eyes? So because I said I know the student has blonde hair, I'm restricting myself to this circle. I'm only looking at people who have blonde hair. Or in the two-way table, I'm only looking at these five. So if I pick someone that has blonde hair, there are five choices. And of those five choices, three have blue eyes. So the answer would just be 3 over 5. So that's a little more difficult because I wasn't talking about picking someone from all 28 students. I was only looking at picking them from the five students who have blonde hair. All right, please again pause and copy this down if you need. I'll just show you a couple more quick examples with Venn diagrams and two-way tables. So sometimes, instead of writing the number of things in each category in a Venn diagram or two-way table, we write the probability of being in each category. So that's what I've done here in the two-way table, and we're going to figure out the probability of being in not A or B. So this two-way table is incomplete, but we can fill in the blanks. So if we're talking probabilities, as we are in this one, probabilities always add to one in exactly the same way that percentages add to 100%, probabilities need to add to one. So I can figure out this number here because I have to add to 0.7. So 0.7 minus 0.1 gives 0 0.6. That means 0 0.8 goes here. And of course, that would mean that 0 0.2 goes here because I have to add to 1. 0 0.3 here and 0 0.1. So I have filled in all the blanks, and I know I'm right because this number and this number add to 1, this number and this number add to 1. All the columns and all the rows add up. So what would be the probability of not A or B? So I want to be not A is this column, and B is this row here. So the probability of being in not A or B, I want to include this number and this number because they're in the not A column and this number and this number because they're in the B row. So remember when I say or, unless otherwise specified, it means at not A or B or both or includes both unless you're told not to. So what would be this probability? It'd just be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. We just add them up exactly like we did when I said the number that we're in each, okay? And I can divide by one as well, the total, but I don't really need to divide by one because that doesn't change the number. So the answer I get is 0 0.4. And then we're done. So I just want to make one really quick point. I said just then that probabilities add to 1 in the exact same way that percentages add to 100. And we see from the two-way table here that if you know the probability of something, like the probability of A, it's 1 minus the probability that it doesn't happen. Okay, so this is just common sense. If the probability it rains today is 0 0.2, the probability it doesn't rain today is 0 0.8. The probability that I toss two heads in a row is a quarter. The probability I don't toss two heads in a row is three quarters. The probability I roll a 6 is 1 over 6. The probability I don't roll a 6 is 1 minus 1 over 6, which is 5 over 6. So make sure you know that. We call A and not A complements, okay? So make sure you understand complements actually mean the event and not the event. For example... The complement of getting an A in maths is not getting a B in maths. The complement of getting an A in maths is not getting an A in maths. The complement of winning a soccer game isn't losing a soccer game. It's not winning the soccer game because you could also draw the game. Okay, so the complement of an event is just the event not happening. And if you know the probability of an event... The probability it does not happen is 
one minus the probability it does happen. All right, sorry for the long video. So remember, there's the geometry video too. Probability and geometry are both on the test. Best of luck, but you're a superstar. You won't need it. Please let me know if you need any more help. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.